what's my intro again? Hello everyone, it's Vaughn, just Alzheimer's, and today I will be teaching you guys how to uh, properly, um, what's this video again? How to actually spike in 4.2. That word Blech. an advanced all you need to know guide about um, how to spike, I guess. Oh, and if you're going to ask what the PP stands for in the title, it means pickups player. So, this new series will be called as pickups player guide because, first, I am a pickups player, big flex, I know, and second, this word is a bit sensitive according to Roblox, so I think YouTube might think of it as something sensitive too. So, YouTube. Please don't demonetize this video. It only means pickups player guide. Dude, imagine making a guide in Roblox, holy shit. I would like to start saying that we will be focusing on this latest update last April 18, 2021. And as you can see here, the update is mainly on the pickup side of the game after its last update, which was two years ago. So that means I will be talking about how to spike in scrims. I still have no idea what the hell this is. Uh, anyways, without further ado, let's start. Before we start the guide, I would like to say first that I will be making up my own terms regarding some techniques used in this game because I don't know some of them and it is all based from what I see and experience. So uh, anyways, let's start the vid. By the way, I'm not going to be teaching you sp how to spike straights, mids, how to do delays or deep cuts and all those stuff because everybody knows that. Hence, I will be teaching you all the advanced mechanics of the games that you probably don't know yet and only 10% of the layman knows and I am one of them. So uh, anyways, I want to start off first about tricks to use set powers. The considered low powers are 1 to 4, mid powers are at 5 to 9, and high powers are at 10 to 15 for me. Now, I would like to explain first that on low powers, you are able to quick or delay your spikes with a good certain amount of time to think about life. And it is really good against quick blockers if you want to aim mids, middle long, or whichever you see is an open area to spike. You are also able to do double jump with a low power. How double jump works in this game is you aim on one spot without spiking and your second jump is when you are going to spike in a different direction. It is a classic trick that still works today. However, your first jump must be before or right when the ball is set so that you have more time to hit the ball in your second jump. Then there is mid powers. Mid powers is kind of like that one hot chick that is walking in the park that you can't take your eyes off even if you are with your girlfriend, low power. Mid powers are versatile set powers because not only you can quick them, but you can also do semi quick which is good against delay blockers. The tricks that are used in this power are quicks, semi quicks, run ups, delays, and glide spikes. It's an all you can use buffet. What are you doing? For the high powers, the most common use of this one is positioning yourself to the antenna or wherever you want the set to be. But that only works best if you are using a max set power. High powers can also be used as run-ups if it has stop set on. However, a max jump set or max bump set still works best in this kind of power if you want to be unblockable. Stop set powers is such an underrated power and it's a shame that not many players use this. Let's get some Fs in the chat please. How stop set works is it cuts the normal power from half of its normal distance. Take note that the ball also stops at the maximum height of the preferred power. It is also a perfect counter against players who like glide blocking. Ha! Eat that! Not only this stop can confuse the opponent's blocker but it can also ruin the opponent's back row positioning if you delay it with a cross spike. You also have better chance to get gaps from this set. Stop set also works best with up tilt sets and it works well in both 4-2 and 5-1 playstyle. Next up is we have Poshi. Okay. Positioning yourself is an important part when spiking. You must always remember that not every receive nor sets are perfect. That means you will have to consider where the ball is landing and where the ball is going after the set. Say so you are using an 8 set power. You want to do a semi quick. If you position yourself without considering where the receive went and the area where the ball was set, the ball will most likely go behind you. Always adjust the antenna and you will be fine. Leaning is one of the most fun aspects of the game. You can do lots of stuff with this feature. But most players doesn't really know how this works or what is the main purpose of this. Players have been misinterpreting this feature of the game saying that this quote unquote slightly changes the direction when spiking. I am going to say it now that it does not. I'm going to focus mainly on leaning in spiking because I mean dude come on it's an actual how to spike video. Now shut up random guy in the comment section saying that my videos are clickbait. So the main purpose of leaning when spiking is it actually expands your hitbox to whichever side you lean. Here is an example. Just in case some flat earthers think that it changed direction when leaning, let me just show you this. We are going to use this middle part of the scoreboard as the crosshair. This is how the ball will go without leaning. And this is while leaning. 
So I just said earlier whichever side. And what I mean by sides are left and right. Everybody knows that. If you lean to the left, your hitbox to the left side will expand. If you lean to the right, your hitbox to the right side will expand. It is a good technique if you are going to delay and planning to aim for the corner, a gap, or really just messing up with a blocker. But of course, don't do the last part. That is just rude. We all know that two is better than one. Why do I feel like a boomer when I say that? Everyone already knows this, but having two or more set powers can make you way less readable. If you are only using one power, then eventually, the opponent can get used to that power you are using and can use that against you. But then again, if you really just want to stick with one power, I recommend you using versatile powers such as mid powers, because low and high powers can get you read easily over time. It is a small detail but really important trick that really helps is having a good view of your surrounding. Zooming out your camera for at least 5 to 7 ticks on your mouse scroll from first person perspective can give you an information about what's happening in the court. You can see open areas to spike where the receive ball is going to position yourself and have more awareness about what's happening inside the court. Oh look, we have a shrek there. Feints is your second option if say you wanted to do it quick but you missed, or you just had a stroke and forgot to press spacebar. The best way to use this is by down tilting and using at least one or two spike power to get that rebound from the opponent's blocker. But if the ball is already below the top of the net, then do up tilt instead. Do not worry about doing a feint though, because in scrims, it is completely illegal to spike a spike be it a feint. Just take note that you should only use this in case of emergency, because if you fail your rebound, you're only giving them a really nice receive and 8 potentials. Now doing flicks before spiking is one way to make your spikes less readable. But you won't believe me when I say pre-aiming can also help if you know how to use it. There are more ways to do than just aiming to the area you want to spike, then shift, jump, then click. There are a few tricks like facing on the side, then doing a manual flick when you are about to spike, or facing a specific area, then aiming for a different spot before you jump and hit the score. It is kind of like a mind game, you know? If you are up against really good receivers, and you know how to play with doing a flick with pre-aim, that back row is going to have a bad time. Wipes or blockouts are one of the most disgusting, vile, unforgivable thing to- No, I'm just joking. Wipes or blocking out is one of the riskiest thing to do in LEGO Volleyball right before starting a YouTube career. How to properly wipe or do a block out here is, you don't necessarily need to serve tilt if you want to force it. You can simply just press S or up tilt right before clicking. It is way easier than pressing S then side tilting before clicking. With this one, you can do a straight wipe or a side block out. If you want to practice doing block outs, I recommend you using low powers so that you have more time to think and see if your opponent is going to block or not. And it is most preferred to hit the ball when it is near the net. If you hit the ball when it is too high, you won't be able to wipe it because you are only making the ball go higher. If it is too low, then you might net it or it will only bounce back inside your team's side of the court. I don't really recommend doing this technique if you are not that much experienced when it comes to reading blocks. I'm going to make a video about that in the future, stay updated. And uh, is that everything? Yeah, that's everything. I hope this video somehow helped you struggling spot out there. There are more tips and tricks that I know that is on the tip of my tongue but I couldn't say it so I will most probably do another one in the future. I mean, I already said that this is going to be a new series in the beginning of the video so uh, might as well do some too from other positions. And yeah, I guess that's everything I have for this video. God, it's hot here. This is Vaughn, just Vaughn. Stay hydrated and I will see you next time. Bye.